Hi, this is Ali Arango of Little Guy CGI, and today I would like to show you how to make 3D clothes and outfits in Blender 2.79. So let's get started. If this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, go to Input, and then choose Select with left click. Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe programs or other 3D programs. Also, while you're in here, click on add-ons, put a check mark next to these add-ons, and this will make it so you can follow right along as we go through this tutorial. Put a check mark next to 3D view, colon 3D navigation, then scroll down. Put a check mark next to mesh colon auto mirror mesh colon edit tools 2 mesh colon f2 mesh colon inset polygon mesh colon loop tools as well as mesh colon relax also put a check mark next to pi menu colon 3d viewport pi menus put a check mark next to pi menu colon ui pi menu official okay what you see in front of you is the result of some other tutorials i'll put links up here so you can get to those tutorials uh what the goal of today is is to make multiple 3d clothes and outfits uh to Put on this character so we're going to take from this character and add from this add to this character and that's how we're going to come up with our 3d clothes okay i want to say uh, thanks to marcella lombardo who put up a bunch of uh, time lapse videos recently that were extremely helpful in my personal learning i learned a lot of what i'm going to show you today from watching her videos and if you want to look deeper into this or see where I, you know, initially learned this from, I recommend you go to her YouTube channel of the same name and uh, watch some of her videos. I want to show you how the uh, geometry for this character is set up because I think it's important for you to know. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to edit mode and just take a general look. You can see that, uh, you know, as, as far as the body, the uh, faces aren't too dense. However, when you look at the head, you can see there's a lot of density in the head. Uh, this should work out well because when we take from this body, like most likely for the, the pants, we're going to take uh, from, from uh, you know, this actual geometry and make our pants. There's not going to be too much where we actually take from the actual head mesh. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click here. Then I'm going to click here to go back to object mode. I'm going to right click right here to put a 3D cursor. Uh, when you first come into Blender, uh, you come in and you're in object mode. You know, just recently I showed you uh, edit mode we were in to manipulate your way. As far as your view in Blender, you can hold the middle mouse button to uh, rotate the view. When you click here, you can use these buttons to quickly get around as far as uh, looking around in your view. When you hold shift and the middle mouse button, you can pan. Uh, when you roll the mouse wheel in, you can zoom in. When you roll it the other way, you can zoom out. When you hold control as well as the middle mouse button, you can zoom in by pushing the mouse in. By uh, dragging the mouse the other direction, you can zoom out. For those of you who followed along from the uh, other tutorials that led up to this mesh, make sure that you click here and then make sure that you click here to turn off X-ray. Okay, we want to bring in a plane. Basically, what we want to do is make a t-shirt right now. That's the plan. So, we want to click on display, go to front, and make sure we're in front orthographic view. Orthographic view is basically a view that allows you to see 3D is almost like it's 2D. Uh, a lot of times that makes it easier to work in uh, 3D, though that sounds kind of funny. But anyway... Uh, if you don't see orthographic view here, you can click here. See, it says view perspective slash ortho. I'm going to click this and make this go back to orthographic view. This is the view you want to be in. 
And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that the 3D cursor is in the center of our scene. We want to do that because that'll make things easier. Uh, we're going to put a mirror modifier on this, which will effectively allow us to do half of the work that we normally would have to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift while holding shift. We're going to press C. Uh, the 3D cursor went here. Everything jumped back, but the 3D cursor is there. Now we'll hover here. We'll hold shift. While holding shift, we'll press B. We'll then draw a zoom box and then zoom back in. So with this 3D cursor here now, we're set up to bring in a plane, and that plane is going to end up becoming our shirt. We're going to use uh, techniques that are uh, from retopology, and that will help us form our T-shirt. So what we're going to do is... We're going to hold shift while holding shift. We're going to press A. This brings up our add to menu. We're then going to go to mesh and then we're going to select plane. Uh, so now with this plane here, what we're going to do is we're going to click here. We're then going to go to edit mode. Currently we're on face select and blender. You can select vertices, edges, and faces by clicking one of these buttons. I'm going to click here to go to vertex select. And now with this plane, of the geometry in the plane being selected, I'm gonna hold Alt and while holding Alt, I'm gonna press M. This brings up our merge menu. And then I'm gonna select at center. What I just did was I took all of the geometry of that plane and I merged it down to one vertex. And that's what we want. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna click here, go back to object mode. We're gonna click this magnet. This magnet will allow this one vertex to select, will allow it to snap to uh, this mesh right here. We're also going to make sure this button is selected. So with this magnet on and this button here uh, selected, you can tell it's selected because it's a little bit darker than the button right next to it. What we want to do is go back to edit mode and then we're going to take this manipulator. We're going to pull that vertex up. We're going to pull that vertex over to the side like that. Okay, what we're going to do now is make sure we're clicked on this. We're going to click X-ray to help ourselves out. We're going to push this over towards the uh, chest area. We are going to click tools. We're going to go down to auto mirror. This is a, a modifier that is new for 2.79. Absolutely spectacular. We're going to click this. This automatically puts a mirror modifier on our mesh. Uh, with that done, we're pretty much ready to go for this. Let's click here, click here. This is the name of our, what's going to be the most part of our shirt. So we're going to click here, name this shirt one. One of the things that can be annoying in using uh, read topology techniques for the human body is putting loops around the human body, right? Max Palermo came up with this awesome way to uh, put loops easily around the human body and uh, we're going to use that to our advantage. The way we're going to do that is we have our 3D cursor here in the center. That's good. Before we bring in this uh, object, which is going to be a cylinder, let's click here to turn off our snapping. Now we're going to hold shift. While holding shift, we're going to press A. Uh, this brings up our add to menu. We're going to hit a mesh and then uh, we're going to select cylinder. Here's our cylinder here. We have these options that popped up over here. Vertices 32. Let's click that. Change this to 20. We'll press enter to lock that in. If I hold the middle mouse button, you can see this uh, top right here. We don't want that. So we'll click here. Then we'll click nothing. So now with that done and with this cylinder selected on, we'll click here. We'll go to edit mode. We'll zoom back. I'm going to press S to scale. The reason why we... Uh, went to edit mode before we started to move this cylinder is we're about to pull this cylinder to the side because we pulled the cylinder to the side in edit mode our origin point for the cylinder is right here right because this is right here we can put a mirror modifier on here very easily very similar to what we did with the uh, vertex right there if we had uh pulled the cylinder to the side in object mode this origin point would be moved and it will cause us a little bit more difficulty once we wanted to put the mirror modifier on. So anyway, with that being said, what we're going to do, let's go like this. I'm going to click X-ray to turn this on. A lot of times when you're putting things into mesh, 
front side is your friend so also top because we want this to be actually inside of our mesh now we're going to press R to rotate on the Y axis right so I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate and this is going to help us with just this initial part the reason why we set this up like this is uh, we want to put a shrink wrap modifier on this and then eventually join it to this and when I'm saying this I'm talking about the one uh, vertex that we initially set up so with this what we're going to do is we're going to click here go to object mode we're then going to click here we're going to click here click here to put a shrink wrap modifier on this cylinder we're now going to click the eyedropper select our target as this mesh and it's already uh, looking pretty good we're going to click here and change this to project and when we put this to project this pretty much perfectly goes right onto this mesh as far as you know going around the body and this is a uh, uh, it's spectacular because uh, you know like I said that can be difficult so anyway with that being done now uh, with that done thinking okay so with that done what we actually can do is we're going to click apply right so we applied that shrink wrap modifier now what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift I'm letting go of shift I'm going to click on my mesh the main mesh let me click here and rename this main mesh and press enter we're going to click this right here when we click this this makes it so we cannot select this main mesh right here so it's useful because now we can click this first hold shift and then click this second with those objects selected in that order we're going to hold control while holding control press J so what happened was is this mesh is now a part of that original shirt one mesh so because that shirt one mesh had a mirror modifier on it this object here acquired that mirror modifier okay we're going to click here so we can select our main mesh again we're going to click here to make sure we're selected on our shirt and mesh we're going to click here go to edit mode i'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom in i'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan when i look here uh, i now think this is too much geometry initially i said put 20 vertices in for uh you know the geometry here we can easily reduce this geometry by uh going to edge select going to select and then selecting checker deselect now I didn't select this yet but when I select this this is going to select every other edge so I'm going to left click on that now and then with every other edge selected I'm going to press X this brings up our delete menu I'm then going to choose dissolve edges and now you can see our geometry is uh, reduced so this is a nice way uh, you know if you do something you're like you know just like just happened it's like uh, it's a little bit more than I wanted now that I think about it that's a decent way to reduce your geometry Okay, I'm going to press A to A to deselect. If you notice, you can't see the initial vertex we we're working with. That's because we're on edge select instead of vertex select. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to grab this, push this over here. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking, you know, the basic of the basic T-shirt in my mind. We're going to zoom in here. We're going to hold Shift and the middle mouse button. What we're going to do here is we're going to click here, hold Shift while holding Shift, press D. I'm going to right click. Uh, as we move through this, uh, I'm going to be speaking fairly quickly. I would like to show you a, what I think is a decent amount of clothes. However, to do that, we're going to have to move quick. So anyway, uh, with this, I have this selected here. I'm going to hold control. And what I'm doing here, I let go of control is I'm matching up the, the uh, vertices with right here. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm holding control, right clicking. Let me turn this on so you, you need this to have this snap correctly so press L 
if you did like I did and you like you moved and it wasn't correct, see, I think this is like in there. You get it, it being Blender in the right angle, then you press G and then you'll find that now with this on your uh, vertices are stuck to where they're supposed to be on the skin. So I'm going to click here, hold control. And what I'm doing is I'm looking and I am matching, you know, up with this. This is kind of dark here, so I'm going to click here, go to solid mode so we can see better. If you're like, what happened to all the geometry? It's because uh, the normal map shows in material mode. Okay, so I'm going to hold shift and click here. Press F. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to hold shift, press. I hit shift D to duplicate. I'm looking at here and here. So now same thing. I'm just going around. You could duplicate this and slide this up. And I say this, I mean this loop. Though uh, you seem to get smoother results from doing this uh, manually like this. So that's why I'm actually going around. Holding shift, pressing D, pressing F. Okay, so now that we have that, this drawn out like this here, I'm gonna press. A to deselect. Let's click here to turn off snapping. I turn off snapping uh, sometimes, because sometimes when you select the snap, see how this is in the back, right? So when I hold them in the mouse button, you can see that's still in the back. If you have snapping on and you click this here, the snapping will make this jump forward to like it's in the front. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to hold alt, click here, hold shift while holding alt, click here. With uh, By holding alt, I was able to select this edge loop as well as that. So now with these two edge loops selected, I'm going to hold control. While holding control, I'm going to press E. This brings up our edges menu. I'm then going to select bridge edge loops. So now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold alt again, click here, hold shift, I'm holding shift because shift allows you to select more than one thing at a time. Um, while holding shift and alt, I'm selecting here with both these edge loops selected. I'm going to hold control while holding control, press E. This brings up our edges menu. I'm going to select bridge edge loops. Hmm. So I have a, a vertice that is not. Right. Okay, we're gonna hold Alt. What? Because I'm holding Alt when I click here. I'm holding Alt. Okay. Let go of them because I'm I'm on Edge Select. Now that I'm holding Edge Select, I'm holding Alt because I'm holding Alt. I select that entire Edge Loop. I'm gonna hold Shift, holding Shift, so I can select this Edge Loop is as, as well as this one. If I wasn't holding Shift when I clicked here, I would lose that Edge Loop. So I'm holding Shift as well as Alt. Letting go of shift and alt. So with both these edge loops selected, I'm going to hold control. While holding control, I'm going to press E. Uh, this brings up our edges menu. I'm then going to select bridge edge loops. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to go to vertex select. This, if you're very confident that your edges are matched up, uh, use the bridge edge loops. If you're unsure, if you might have forgotten a uh, vertex what you can do is just go around like this hold shift you can just look like this I'm selecting four vertices and I'm just basically going around pressing F pressing F holding the middle mouse button to rotate Hold control in the middle mouse button. Hold control pushed in with the middle mouse button to zoom in. I'm holding shift. While selecting this, pressing F. Click here, hold shift. Press F. Shift. Press F. I'm holding shift as I'm selecting the four vertices. I'm pressing F. Pressing F. Now, this is where it gets interesting. See this? Here we go. Do I 
have a missing So, see this, uh, the reason why I'm, why, I'm, why I'm looking here is if I click just like we did here, we'll have a triangle. We don't want that. So I'm going to hover here, hold control while holding control. I'm going to press R, going to left click, then left click again to lock that in. So now, I'll click here, press F. Now we have a quad. You want to try to have quads and not triangles. I'm going to click here, hold shift. F. Not sure how that happened. And then in a situation like this, we already added an extra edge. We can just click here, hold shift. It, see, this would be a triangle here. We don't want that. So I'm going to click here. Then with these two vertices selected, I'm going to hold Alt while holding Alt, press M. Then I'm going to select uh, at last. So now we merge those two vertices. So now we have our quad here. So I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate. So what we're going to do is look here. So we're going to click here. Let's uh, hold control click here. Holding control. Because I'm holding control, I'm able to just extrude these uh, vertices. Just hold the middle mouse button to rotate. So with this done now, we, we can click here. Holding shift. Press F. Press F. In my other tutorial uh, that I made, very similar to this tutorial where I was showing how to, clicking here, I'm holding control. Where I was showing how to do this, I duplicated the geometry of the body and I used that to make the shirt. So somebody might be watching this and say, "What? Well, why are you doing this now? Why are you forming the shirt and it, it, there's more freedom this way is is the basic reason the old way that i showed you where you uh if you saw that video where you you know select the body and duplicate you can use that this way gives you more freedom so with this cl uh, click here i'm going to hold control and then push this towards itself i'm going to press a to deselect so now what i'm going to do is click here then click here so when I brought this out, I was you know, holding control. I'm going to press F to fill that. Click here. Press F to fill that. No. Press A to deselect. I'll click here. Like that. Press A to deselect. We're still on vertex select. I'm going to click here. Hold the minimum mouse button. Rotate. I'm going to hold control. Hold the minimum mouse button. Rotate. Control again. I'm just looking to match these up. Control, control, control. Right here, I'm looking at like, okay, one, two. So we'll need another one right there. Hold the minimum mouse button to rotate. Okay, so let's click here, hold shift. So we're just clicking our vertices while holding shift. Shift allows us to select one and one vertice at a time. We'll press A to deselect. Press F, hold the middle mouse button to rotate. Press F. And as I'm rotating, I'm rotating, you know, kind of to get this to move in a way where I can see. And hold shift and middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to press A to D select and hold control and the middle mouse button to zoom in. 
putting shift again, we'll press F. I'll press F and press A to deselect. And this is kind of what you want. It's almost like looks like a, like a top piece of armor here. So with that done, uh, what we can do here is basically what I'm doing now is I'm looking at like, okay, the neck comes up like this. So I'm thinking we'll go here to edge select here. I'm going to hold control. When I hold control, when you click a part and then hold control, it's a thing in Blender called, a technique in Blender called the uh, shortest path. So where you click at and you hold control, Blender will choose the shortest path. Uh, pretty useful technique. I'm going to press E to extrude, and then I'm going to right click. So I made ge new geometry, even though it doesn't look like I did. With this new geometry, I'm going to take this and push this right towards itself, like that. And then with that done, I'm going to hold Control, press R. When I'm doing this, I don't want to make too much geometry. So now I'm going to left click, left click again, and press A to deselect. And when we have the basic geometry, we can come back and, you know, form things more like, uh, see this right here? I can uh, click here and turn off the x-ray so it's easier to see. And we can go back and forth with the x-ray, you know, uh, to, to, for what we need as far as uh, forming our shirt. So I want to click here another thing you can do like this is still difficult to work with another thing that we can do is we can click here we can click on our mesh we have a mirror modifier on this mesh we can click this I'll also click on our main mesh I'll temporarily take the mirror modifier as far as view or, or turn off the view so we it's currently hidden click on our on here go back to edit mode click here turn the x-ray back on but since we have less geometry it's easier for us to see uh, what's going on as far as this with the back I'm gonna go to face select press C paint this press G just to make sure that our snapping snaps that for us I'm going to click here, go to here, here being object mode, click here, click here, turn the mirror modifier back on, click here, turn the mirror modifier back on. When I say turn it on, I mean turn our ability to see it on. So with this selected, I'm going to click here, then click here, then press A to deselect. Okay, when we look here, when I look at this, I'm like, oh, it looks almost like the geometry is like aim down that's a good thing because what we can do is grab this edge and extrude this down so uh if we keep this snapping on and we grab this edge this edge in the back will snap to the front it'll snap to our view here so we want to click this turn this off we're going to click here we're going to click shrink wrap we're going to click here and then select right here and uh we brought this back in since we're turning the uh snapping off here the shrink wrap will do another kind of snapping for us, but the kind of snapping it'll do is it will allow us to push down without having, uh, you know, the geometry in the back snap to the front. So we're going to click here, hold alt, click here, zoom back. I'm going to press E to extrude. I'm going to right click so that extrusion stays in place. I'm going to take this and push this down. Turn this off. Temporarily, I'm going to press S to scale in the Z axis, zero, and then left click. Now, what I did there, S to scale in the Z axis, zero, is very useful for uh, flattening things out like uh, we just did there. So, push that down like that. Bring that back. I'll press S to scale that up. Now what I'm going to do is press A to deselect. I'm going to hold control while holding control, press R, put a loop cut in. I'm going to roll my mouse wheel to put those 
loop cuts in. Now I double click to lock them in. I'm pressing A to deselect. Now I'm going to click here to turn this back on. And you can see that the shrink wrap is making our mesh go towards our body, which is what we want. See this right here? To not see this, you click this button right here, and it just makes it look like that shrink wrap modifier is applied, which is very nice. So what we are going to do now is uh, we're going to click here, go to object mode. We're going to click apply as well as apply. We're going to take this shirt as it is. We're going to hold shift while holding shift. We're going to press D. Shift D, I should say. We duplicate that. I'm going to right click. So we have a duplicate shirt. We're going to press M. This brings up our move to layer. We're going to click here. So we have a backup shirt right here on this layer. So now we'll click back here. Make sure we're selected on this shirt, which we are now. So now we'll click here. We'll go to edit mode. And what we're going to do here is we're going to hold alt. I'm going to click here, put the shrink wrap back on. So I clicked, I clicked the ink dropper and then I clicked just on this edge right here. If you're like, what'd you do? That's what I did. And I did that just because I wanted this to move this up towards the neck. It's so easy to put this on. Why not? You know, to do it. it's going to make things easier for us. So I'm, I'm uh, scaling in. Okay, so now that I'm doing that, I'm going to press uh, E to extrude, right click, then press S to scale in like that. Click here. So that looks like that's applied. This doesn't look right here. Do not like this. Be very careful. Right here. It's not good. I'm going to. I'm gonna Click here, go to object mode. I'm going to click apply. I'm going to click back here. Be very careful. This right here, on the edge here. And then I clicked here just to get this, this manipulator move away for a second. There we go. So be careful about this in the back here. It's bunched up. So. Okay, so with that done, just taking a look, I'm going to press A to deselect. What we want to do here is uh, I'm going to click here to go to face select. I'm going to hold alt. I'm going to click here. I'm going to press E to extrude. I'm going to right click. I'm going to then uh, Pull that up, something like that. I'm going to press A to deselect. I did this so that the uh, collar would would stand out right here. I find that when you're dealing with clothes, the edges like here as well as here are very important. I'm going to hold Alt. I'm going to first I'm going to click this. Now I'm going to hold Alt. And see now this is going to uh, it wants me to do this twice. I don't want to do it twice. I just want to do what I'm about to do here or there. Because of this nice, beautiful add-on, it is so easy to put a mirror modifier. Mirror modifier is back on. It's it's so easy. Why not use it? So now we'll click here. We'll press E to extrude. Right click. We'll press S to scale in like that. I'm going to zoom in. I held shift the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to press A to deselect. Make sure we're on edge select. Now I'm holding alt. I'm holding alt again. I click here, I'm going to press, oops, I'm going to hold control, press B, hold shift for find control, go like that. I beveled this by holding control B, that's what I did. A bevel will take one edge, make it into two. It also opens up this panel right here that says bevel. See where it says segments right here? I'm going to take this segment up to three. I'm going to press A to deselect, I'm going to zoom back. Click here, go to object mode. I'm going to press Z, then select shade smooth. Okay, we did a decent amount on this shirt. So what we want to do is click on the shirt, hold shift, press D. I'm going to right click. 
I duplicated this shirt. I'm going to press M to bring up our move to layer. I'm going to click here to move the duplicate shirt to here. That duplicate shirt is good for us to go back to. I just click to select this again. Uh, the duplicated shirt is good for us to go back to. It's also good for having lower poly versions of the shirt to use for a normal map. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to click apply. We're then going to click here. We're going to click here to put a multi-resolution modifier onto the shirt. A multi-resolution modifier is very good for adding a decent amount of geometry to uh, what you're working on, but uh, you can go to edit mode and you won't see this geometry. So you can make changes to the geometry you're working with. So with this on, we're going to click subdivide twice, right? So you can see this geometry uh, went up. You can also see though the shirt is inside of this mesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to click here, click x-ray. Now we can see the shirt is in this in the side of the mesh a lot. With the shirt selected on, we're going to click here, go to edit mode. We're going to press A to select our shirt. I just uh, wrote the mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to click here to go to face select. I'm going to hold alt and then while holding alt, I'm going to press S. Then I'm going to hold shift for find control. I, I let go of uh, the shift. This is fine how this is here. You don't have to pull the shirt so it's all the way out. You could. It's fine like this. We're going to be doing a lot of manipulation of this. So this is fine how it is. So I'm going to press uh, A to deselect. I'm then going to click here. Then click here to go back to object mode. With our shirt selected on. We're going to click here. We're then going to go into sculpt mode. Here in sculpt mode, look at the tools uh, tab right here. Look for symmetry lock. Normally symmetry lock is on by default. Make sure that uh, you have your mirror set for X so that your work for now will be, you know, uh, reduced. So with this on, I'm going to click here. Scroll that up. I'm going to click here. Go to the inflate brush. The inflate brush does what it sounds like it does. I'm going to press F. When I press F and pull, my brush gets bigger. If I push the other direction, it gets smaller. And I'm going to use the inflate brush to bring in a scale that makes our shirt come through our mesh. And this the mirror is allowing, so on the other side, yeah, we effectively, it, it's very similar to a mirror modifier. I'm holding the middle mouse button to rotate. Be careful around this collar area. Sometimes you can, oh, I'm holding shift and middle mouse, but you can overdo things. Uh, you And you want to be a little careful around these edges here. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. adjust this color in edit mode we're going to click here go to edit mode we're going to uh, click here we're going to turn on the x mirror option this kind of works like a mirror modifier this is useful you sit there and say well why are you using this instead of the uh, mirror modifier especially where you're saying it's easy to put on because of this multi-resolution modifier if we put a mirror modifier on here it'll be underneath this this works a little bit different than some modifiers so long story short the best current option for doing quick work like this, I think, is the X mirror. So we'll click here. Pull that back. You can see that's responding. Here. Okay, so I am going to click here to turn that off. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to click here, click here, hold the middle mouse button, rotate. I'm then going to click here, then click here to go to scope mode. And there's still stuff coming through, but it's good for you to know the other things. We're going to be making a bunch of adjustments on this. When you look here, you can see this has a subdivide preview of two. 
scope the two as well as render of two. When you take this subdivide up, this will require more computer power. So uh, I just want you to be aware of that. I'm going to take this up to four. And when I click, I click this twice, this went up. Now I'm going to take the preview up to four. One of the things we need uh, for our clothes, and I find that this uh, helps a lot with clothes, is seams. We're going to click on tools. We're going to click here. We're going to click here. And uh, this crease tool allow is very useful for making seams. Uh, it's useful for a lot of things, but very good for seams. seams and that's what we're going to do right now. So what we want to do is with this selected, our strength is 250. Let's take this up into the 500 range. We're also going to go to stroke. Now, this is a key thing right here. This stroke allows us to have control of this seam in a way that I think looks realistic. Uh, so with this stroke selected, our stroke method is, is uh, currently space. That's fine. We want to put a check mark here next to smooth stroke. So we're going to left click here, right? So now what we're going to do is hold them the mouse button to rotate. Um, we want to put a seam going down like this. See the size of this uh, brush? When I press F, I can push in to make this smaller. And obviously we push the other way to make it bigger. This brush size, just so you know, I would say aim for a size about the size of your eye to do this seam work. Also, to see the seam, you're going to need to have uh, probably about four sub uh, a subdivide of four to see this. So with this done now, and with that smooth stroke on, I'm going to hold shift so we have a good view. So I want to come from here. I'm not doing it yet, but we want to drag from here to here, right? So I'm going to left click and drag, and it's kind of cool. See that? As I'm dragging... It's almost like I'm dragging on a string, which is uh, very cool. Uh, and because of that, it allows me to draw lines, but also, but not have the lines be so straight that they don't look real. If that, I hope that makes sense. This, I want this to be even finer, so I'm going to take this up to uh, five. Again, be uh, careful as far as your computer power with this. I hold the minimum mouse button to rotate. So I'm dragging and I'm aiming to go right over the last seam. I'm going to go over it again. And one more time. Okay, so we want to have a seam going like this, so I'm going to drag like this. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. You have to be careful when you uh, zoom in. Make sure that the uh, size of your brush is still small compared to. Uh, see if I zoom in. Okay. I'm just going to go over this again. I would definitely say these seams are very important. As far as your clothes. Okay, now we want to have a seam. Uh, 
this. I'm going to hold down the mouse button to rotate. Right here. Okay, so now we have seams. What we can do now is let's click here. Let's press F to uh, make our brush bigger. I'm going to click here. I'm going to grab the snake hook brush. Snake hook brush is very useful for pulling things. It's kind of like a, the move brush. What we want to do is we want to have wrinkles in our shirt. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click back on the seam uh, crease brush. Let's say seam brush. It's a crease brush. We're going to scroll down. We're looking for there we are we're looking for the stroke method remember the default stroke method is space and we're still in space we want to take off this smooth stroke for now so we're going to click that to take it off we're going to press f to shrink our brush we hold the middle mouse button to uh rotate okay uh in sculpt mode see right here this says subtract when i hold control this will this being the brush will automatically switch to add also when i hold shift i'll automatically uh, switch to this smooth brush as you sculpt you realize that um, people who made blender did that to make things easier and is very effective so what we want to do now is we want to put in some wrinkles here this is a stress point so where your, your wrinkles tend to be where you know, you have stress in the clothing, and the stress a lot of times comes from bends. So we're just going to put some wrinkles going up around here. So uh, we're going to hold control, which is going to make this, this is subtract. Because I'm holding control, it's going to automatically switch to add, right? So we're just going like this, and we're just putting stress points here. Going to hold the mouse button to rotate. Where the seam is at is a stress point as well. So I'm going to hold control like this. Now we're getting the exact same uh, wrinkles. I'm going to hold control here on this side. So this, we keep this like this. This will look funny. When I say this, I mean having the symmetry on. So what we want to do is we want to... Scroll down to look for symmetry lock, which is right here, and then click this to take that X off. We'll hold the middle mouse button to rotate. We'll scroll up here, click here, click grab, press F to make our brush bigger. And you can see that we can pull these wrinkles and make them look a little different than they were before. I'm going to press F to shrink my brush. I find that, uh, uh, having a direction to go from or towards helps as far as wrinkles. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to the crease brush and then I'm going to hold control. And while holding control, I'm basically dragging away from that shoulder there, the chest, because the chest is coming out, your wrinkles would most likely tend to, not be as much right here where it's like kind of flat so i'm holding control here this is the shoulder we're kind of going away so with the back i'm gonna kind of do the the same thing for here i'm gonna hold control and do similar to i'm gonna press f to make the brush bigger Similar to what we did on the front. So once you have your initial wrinkles, see like this is going up into the chest. What we can do is hold shift. Now you see that? Look over to the uh, the side. See how that smooth brush is there? So this allows us to 
smooth, you know, what we've done. Now I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to inflate. Now see how the inflate has inflate here, then deflate. When we hold control, we'll automatically deflate. So what I find, what I think looks good is we have this coming out. Now we go in between, we hold control. And as I'm holding control, I'm deflating in between uh, these wrinkles that we made here. I'm holding shift to, to uh, smooth there. So I, I like the look that that gives. Let's hold control to minimize what I zoom. So I'm basically going to the side of, see this right here, how this came out? It's cool because I'm holding control. Now I just don't hold control and then I can just smooth kind of like work. Sometimes you might have to make your brush bigger. So pretty neat. Pressing F to shrink the brush. You can just, you know, go around, you can smooth what you, uh, so we're going to hopefully get through a decent amount. We can also use uh, the uh, inflate right on our actual uh, wrinkles that we made to influence them, which is pretty cool. If you think they're too much, we can just hold shift, smooth them out. them being the wrinkles and you can do all kinds of wrinkles these shapes tend to work very well you know you can you can uh i'm gonna press f make some you know, stress points in and it's kind of neat with the wrinkles because you can just smooth them out and it, it's, it's almost like you can give kind of like the hint of wrinkles if you're not sure and then just just smooth them out you can you can you know smooth it out so it's like it and it definitely helps with uh with reference so holding the middle mouse button to rotate i'm going to click here to go to our inflate brush just to, like i said be careful around your collar We have a basic shirt right here. You can take more time, you know, put more wrinkles in it. Uh, not bad. So let's continue on. We can use this to keep going as far as uh, what we make. We can use this to layer clothes. We can use this to make jackets, all kinds of different things. Okay, and hopefully in this video, I'll be able to show you that. Um, for now, we're going to move on to pants. So what we're going to do is we're going to click here, go to object mode. I'm going to click on this shirt. I'm going to press M and then I'm going to move this to this layer right here. I'm now going to click back on our main mesh here. I'm going to I am going to Hold shift, press D, then right click for our, so now we have a duplicate of this main mesh in the same position. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here, go to edit mode. I'm going to zoom back. I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold control and middle mouse button to zoom in. I'm going to click display, go to front. We're in orthographic mode. That's good. I'm going to press Z to go to wireframe. I'm now going to hold control and then while holding control, I'm going to uh, draw a lasso select around the top part of this mesh. I'm going to click on face select. I'm now going to press X to bring up our delete menu. I'm then going to choose faces to delete. I'm also going to hover here. I'm going to press B for box select, grab here, press X, then choose faces to delete. I'm now going to press Z, then select solid view. And you can see this is the mesh, the, the duplicate we're seeing there. 
I roll the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm going to hold Alt, then click here to select that edge of the faces. I'm going to press X, then choose faces to delete. For right here, I'm gonna, well, for this whole mesh, I'm going to hold Alt while holding Alt, press S. I'm going to hold Shift for Find Control. We're just bringing these pants out some. Got this loop right here that looks kind of funny, so I'm going to press A. I'm going to hold Alt. There we go. I'm going to press X. This brings up our Delete menu. Then I'm going to choose Faces to Delete. Okay, so what we want to do here is uh, we want to have this not match up so tightly to the body. So I'm going to click here for edge select. I'm going to hold Alt. I'm going to push this down. I'm going to press S to scale. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go to places where things are fairly tight on the body. We're going to pull away a little bit. So I'm going to press O to bring up our uh, proportional editing tool. You can see this blue circle that popped up here. The proportional editing tool allows you to move more than one vertex, edge, or face at a time. So we press G. When I press G, it allows us to move what I've selected, but it also allows us to see that circle of influence there. When I roll the mouse wheel, I can shrink the circle of influence. When I uh, roll the mouse wheel the other direction, I can increase the area of influence. Whatever is in that circle is affected. So I'm going to pull to the side, something like that. You don't want to do too little. You don't want to do too much. Click here. Press G. Press Y. Press A. That last menu was kind of like an accident. Yeah, you want it to be a little looser, but not too much. Want to press G then Y. Press A to deselect. You kind of want to think about when you look at pants, like what is tight. I'm going to hold control, put two loop cuts in here. Control R, put the loop cuts in there, by the way. Right here. Make face select. Press O, then press G. Press A to deselect. Okay, we're going to hold the minimum mouse button to rotate. We're going to click here, hold shift, hold control and the minimum mouse button to zoom in. We're going to hold alt, click here, press E to extrude, right click, hold shift and the minimum mouse button to pan, press S to scale. Be aware that there's a button on YouTube that will allow you to slow down the video as well as the sound as well. If this is going very fast, I just, I want to try to show you a bunch of different variations, hopefully of shirts, jackets, and pants, but to get through that, we're going to have to move quickly. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold Alt. I'm going to click here. I'm going to hold Control. While holding Control, press B. I'm going to hold Shift. I beveled right there. The bevel options are here. I'm going to take this segment to take this up to three. I'm going to press A to deselect. Back, I'm going to hold shift them in a mouse button, and pan. I'm going to hold alt, click here, press E to extrude, right click, press S to scale, press A to deselect, hold alt, click here, press B. I beveled, I'm going to left click. The bevel remembers the three that I did. I'm going to press A to deselect, I'm going to zoom back. I'm going to click here, go to object mode. So, here in object mode, what we want to do is we want to click apply. We now want to click here and then put on a multi-resolution modifier. We're going to take this up to four. We're now going to click here and then click here to go into sculpt mode. Okay, here in sculpt mode, we need to put our seams in. So what we're going to do is click tools, go here, click the crease brush. We're going to press F to shrink down our brush. Hold the mouse wheel to zoom in. We need to go to look at our stroke method at space. That's what we want. Now we see smooth stroke. We want to put a check mark here. We're holding the middle mouse button just to rotate that out of the way. And now we're P 
taking how we want our scenes to be. I'm going to press F to make this smaller. We're just dragging the scene down. I'm going to hold shift and then a mouse button to pan. Okay, we got the beginnings of it. Now let's go over it again. up hold and shift and then a mouse button pan okay let's get the inside part of the scene Uh, the uh, saying uh because it looks like our symmetry is not on. Slightly annoying, but actually it's not too bad. The scene goes fairly quick, so. Put in the scene here. Looks like I'm putting a scene here. If you do make mistakes because we have to put wrinkles over this, don't let it get to you too much. I'm going to go to our clay strips brush. And we're building up the this part right here. So I'm building this up. Now I'm holding shift to smooth that out. Okay, I find that uh, zigzag patterns tend to work well. Scroll down, let's put on our X mirror. I'm gonna click here, click here. I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm gonna put stress lines here. I'm holding control. I want to take off the uh, smooth stroke. So we're doing stress lines away from stress. So this crease causes stress. I find that zigzag patterns tend to work fairly well. the size of the brush and then basically once we have these zigzag patterns you can kind of go and uh, add to them so what I like to do is do disease hold control and then in between like we did before and then also add to them 
inflating them. Sometimes inflating them. So now I'm smoothing them out. same thing here in the back pressing F to decrease the size of the brush I'm kind of like where I just go to you know the parts coming out and I just add on now I'm going to hold control and not sorry, I'm gonna take that away. Click here. Tried it with the uh, inflate brush. I mean, uh, the uh, crease brush is better like this. I'm going now. I'm holding control, which is deflating instead of inflating. And now I'm letting go of control and I'm inflating some of the uh, the wrinkles here. Now I'm holding control, going in between. Now I'm going to press F and I'm going to smooth out some of these wrinkles. So there's all kinds of different methods, you know, uh, putting wrinkles in again. I would like to get through a decent amount of clothes. I'm going to click here and press F. Holding control and I'm just kind of holding shift to smooth this out, shrinking the brush. Sometimes, I mean, a smooth can, it really can help you out a lot as far as uh, making things look uh, better. So we have this is very symmetrical, right? So what we can do is come down here, turn off the symmetry lock, go up. Then we can uh, take the grab brush and we can uh, very slightly make variations to be careful you can also use the snake hook brush snake hook brush looks like it might be better for this just very slight variations so that somebody doesn't look at it and obviously see that you uh it's symmetry and it doesn't take that much. Okay, we'll go around to the front. Let's hold shift them in a mouse button to rotate, zoom in. Let's go to our mask brush. Press F. Let's take up that strength. The mask brush allows you to protect things, right? So I'm protecting this area in the black. Whatever is in the black is protected. Whatever out is unprotected. However, by holding control I, we can switch. So now this is all protected. This is unprotected. And because this is unprotected, this lets us use that shape that we just drew. This is extremely useful. So now I'll just click just like that to the side. Press F to increase the size of my brush. Then I'll click here, get a pretty much straight view and just click like that to flatten that out. Okay, I'm going to scope mode. Go back to scope. To get rid of this, we just hold Alt, press M. 
and now the mask is gone. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's click here, go to object mode, let's click where our shirt was at. So our shirt was right here, we can kind of see them together. And what we can do is like this right here with our shirt, we can click on our shirt. If we want to use these two clothing pieces together, we can click here. Go to scope mode and then we can use our snake hook brush now we're just on the shirt we can just grab that pull it out from same thing there hold the middle mouse button to rotate areas like this we can click here go to inflate and like that I'm going to click here, go to object mode. I'm going to click on our pants. There we go. I'm going to click the material. I'm going to click plus new. Then I'm going to click on our original material for our pants and click minus just so they're a different color than our mesh. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to click on our shirt. Now that we have a basic shirt and pants, we can do a lot with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift. While holding shift, we're going to press D. Then right click. Now remember, this shirt here is on this layer. So I'm going to take this duplicate I just made by holding Shift D. I'm going to move it to the uh, first layer. So I'm going to press M. Then I'm going to click here. So now, when we click here, we have this duplicate of this shirt here. So with this, we can do all kinds of different things. Like, for instance, suppose we uh, want to turn this into a hoodie. We can. Uh, click here go to edit mode I'm going to hold shift hold shift and middle mouse button to pan I'm going to zoom in for this I am going to put a mirror modifier on here so I'm going to I'm going to put a mirror modifier on here. So I'm going to go back to edit mode. I'm going to get an auto mirror. So now there's a mirror modifier on here. What we want to do is click here, hold control. Blender chose the shortest path. I was telling you about that before. Now I'm going to press E to extrude. Right click. I'm going to press S to scale. Pull that up some like that. Go to vertex select, pull this out. I'm going to hold alt, click here. So I have that whole top edge there. I'm going to press E to extrude, right click. I'm going to pull this up like this. I'm going to press R to rotate on the x-axis like this I'm gonna press s to scale pull this up more push this towards itself hold control press r Click here, I'll hold control for the shortest path, pull that up, put another loop cut here, pull that out to the side like that. I'll press A to deselect. I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate. See this right here? This is a issue with our normals. Blender's trying to show us that the normals are not correct. 
because of the shading, if you're like, what are normals? Normals are the direction that polygons face. Um, normally, you want them to face outward. So uh, we can fix this fairly easily. We're going to press A to select all of our geometry. Uh, at least all of our geometry as far as, you know, what we're currently working with in edit mode. I'm going to hold control while holding control, press N. Now you can see that is no longer there. So the normals are now facing the correct uh, direction. I'm going to click here. This right here, this is going to give us issues. Don't be too concerned about it. I'm going to click here to take that away. I'm going to click here. Click here to go back to edit mode. What we want to do is press A to deselect. I'm going to press Z. Select wireframe. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to let go of control because I'm on vertex select. I want to be on face select. Now I'm going to hold control. Hold the right mouse button and draw a lasso select. Around all of this geometry, I'm going to press Z. Select solid. I'm going to press C. Hold them in the mouse button. When I uh, press C, I activate the paint select. When I hold them in the mouse button, I deselect. Holding shift, I let go of shift now. To rotate. Zooming in by holding them in the mouse button. Holding shift, I'm holding them in the mouse button to rotate. Now if this selected, what we want to do is scale this down. So I'm going to press S to scale. That was just regular scale. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. Now I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis like that. Hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis like this. Push this towards itself. Press S to scale on the Z axis like that. S to scale on the Y axis like that. I'm going to click here, click here, press O, press G. And when I pressed O, I turned on the proportional editing tool. We had worked with that before. Proportional editing tool allows us to manipulate more than one vertice edge or face at a time. You can tell it's on because it's blue circle. I'm going to click here, click here. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to click here, click here, zoom back more by rolling the mouse wheel. I'm going to press O. I pressed O. I turned on our proportional editing tool. The proportional editing tool allows us to move more than one vertex edge or face at a time. I'm going to press G, bring this down, some like that, press A, I'm going to reselect what we just did, I'm going to press Z, go to wireframe, press Z, solid, press C for paint select, hold them in a mouse button, deselect, hold shift, And press S to scale on the X axis. I'm going to roll my mouse wheel to shrink my area of influence. Push this towards itself like that. I'm going to press S to scale. Roll the mouse wheel. See me decreasing that area of influence. Click here, press G, then increasing the area of influence as I was pushing in. Right 
here. Push G to now. So I pushed in, I look for the back of the head, I'm like, there it goes, and then I pull back something like that. Push G to Y. And if you're wondering why I'm not concerned about this coming out, it's because we're going to re-put the uh, subdivision surface on. Okay, so a hoodie should, the hood would come down, kind of go to like the split in the hoodie. So we're going to click here. We're going to hold Alt, then click here. And make sure we're on face select. We're going to press O to turn off the proportional editing tool. We're going to press X that brings up our delete menu. We're going to choose faces to delete. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to press Z. I'm going to go to wireframe. I'm going to make sure we're on face select, which we are. I'm going to hold control, hold the right mouse button. I wanted this. I got that. I'm going to press C, hold the mouse button. C, adds, C does paint select, hold the middle mouse button, allows you to deselect. I'm now going to press X. It brings up our delete menu. I'm going to choose faces to delete. I'm going to select Z, go to solid. What I want to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to click here for edge select. I'm going to hold all. I want this to be a straight line. I can do that by using this mirror. So I'm going to push this towards itself. Then I'm going to push this out. Just selecting these uh, edges. Bringing them out. I'm going to vertex select. Control R to put another loop cut there. R to put another loop cut here. Okay, so I wanted this here. So I'm going to click here, then take off clipping. I'm going to go to edge select. I'm going to hold alt, select here, pull to the side like that. I'm going to press E to extrude, right click. Get the extrusion to stay in place. I'm going to push this towards uh, the mirror. I'm going to click here, like that. I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to hold Alt, select here. I'm going to press. Uh, Before I press anything, I'm going to turn off this clipping. I'm going to press E to extrude. Then I'm going to right click to get that to stay in place. Push that out like that. I'll shift the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to go to edge select. I'm going to hold alt. I'm going to click here. I'm going to press O to turn on the proportional editing tool. I'm going to press S. I can see the area of influence there. I'm rolling the mouse button to increase it. Hold alt. Oh, I wanted just this here. I was wondering why everything was increasing. So. Here, this strings there. I'm going to press O to turn off the proportional editing tool. Dealing with this, pulling these vertices. Let's press A, W. Brings up our specials menu. Let's select remove doubles. Nothing gets removed. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna 
left click on clipping, I'm going to press Z, go to wireframe, I'm going to select, go to face select, I'm going to press B, select right here, press Z, go to solid view, hold the middle, I held the middle mouse button to rotate, I'm going to roll my mouse button up, hold the middle mouse button to deselect there, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to deselect here, press Z, go to wireframe, press C, Hold the mouse wheel to change the area of influence. I'm going to press Z. Go to solid. I'm going to pull apart right here like that. I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, we're going to click here to turn clipping on. We're going to click here. We're going to hold Alt, then click here. We want to bring this down this we then want to press E to extrude right click scale that up we're gonna hold all We'll hold Alt here. We'll hold Control B. We'll put in two segments there. So we'll hold Control R. Left click. We'll click here. We'll go Object Mode. We'll apply our mirror modifier. What we're going to do now is we're going to put a solidify modifier on. What this does is this makes objects thicker. If I click here so you don't see this, see how thin that is right there? With this on, there's thickness to this. Now, the regular default settings, there's thickness everywhere. The ends as well as here. We only really need it here as far as well as here as well as here. So we can select this option that says only rim. So now instead of having thickness here, we only have the thickness there. and. A lot of times having less, less complexity is better. Okay, so with that selected, we're gonna click apply. We're now gonna click here, click multi-resolution modifier. We're gonna click subdivide, subdivide up to four. We're now gonna click here, then click here to go to scope mode. Now that we're in here and I see this, I don't like how that looks. We're gonna go back to edit mode. I apologize. I thought we were gonna it was gonna stop us from having to make another scene. So I'm gonna hold alt, zoom in, hold shift, hold, zoom in, holding shift as well as alt to select these two edge loops. I'm gonna press X to bring up our delete menu. I'm then gonna choose dissolve edges. I'm now gonna hold alt to select that entire loop, I'm going to press S to scale. Maybe this will give us what I want. And uh, because we haven't done work yet for this, let's click that, take that off. Yeah, I know. Put a mirror on it. The mirror automatically gave us this. Uh, so now with that, we'll click here, go to object, apply. Yes, it can be annoying. I apologize for that, but it is, I think it can be useful for you to know uh, how to deal with fixing stuff sometimes. Oh, that looks much better, much better. Okay, so I'm gonna click here, go to scope mode. So here in scope mode, what we wanna do Let's go up here. Oh, before I touch anything, make sure you go to symmetry lock. Make sure you have this X turned on now. There we go. Let's fill that in. Maybe 
this. This. Look at it. Let's go here. Like this. Let's click here. So what we can do with the snake hook brush is we can kind of make it look like gravity is happening on this thing. I mean, that's so let's press F, shrink that down some. So like with our hoodie here, let's go to mouse button, rotate, we can go here. And what we can do is we can kind of do our own simulated gravity by pulling down here. See that? So we can kind of like get it exactly how we want it, it being the hoodie. We can almost, in a sense, simulate our own kind of gravity by grabbing different points. You can just, you know, when you see the head pop down, you can just reverse. See that? It's like kind of almost like, there we go. It's like we're you know, pulling down like we are, we are the gravity. You can just, you know, shift the middle mouse button down. Shift, smooth. Okay, we can quickly add detail to this with uh, the mask brush. So, go on the mouse button, zoom in. Just like a pocket thing here typically on hoodies so I'm going to hold control press I Before I do this, I want to puff this up, but I can protect this zipper line thing here by going like this. So now I can just puff this out. And I can even come here and take the crease brush. Press F, hold control, and uh, by holding control, when you use the crease brush, you actually make things harder. So I'm actually putting a, trying to put somewhat of an edge here. I'll press F, and then I'll smooth that out somewhat there. And now I'm gonna hold Alt while holding Alt, press M. And I can, uh, and then smooth that out. Press F. Oops, I'm going to hold Shift. And then I'll 
looks like here go to the blob brush I'm gonna press F it's smaller holding control I'm trying to basically have the idea of a pocket here here and like when we're, when we're trying to do something like this see how this is moving what I can do is go here to the mask brush and I can actually go here like this Now when I go here, I can have that pocket be more, just holding shift, and I can hold alt, press M to get rid of that, and you can keep, you know, shaping it. shrink our brush okay let's put our seams in I'm gonna press F I'm gonna press F to shrink this I'm gonna click here click here our stroke method is space that's good we're gonna select the smooth stroke and now what we're gonna do is draw our seam I'm gonna press F to make this smaller I'm gonna take this up to five where this is going to take a decent amount of computer power to do that. Put our scene there. Scene there. And when I'm trying to put the seam in or putting the seam in, I try to put a slight curve to the seam. seam here okay, I'm going to zoom back I'm going to hold shift and whoops shift in the mouse button and pan I'm going to scroll down I'm going to take this mirror off because I want to put a seam here and if I'm off centered I uh I don't want there to be two lines drawn I'm gonna turn that back on I find is if you click here, go to inflate, stroke method is space, that's good. Uh, stroke method space is default, by the way. Uh, if you take the stroke and put it with the inflate, I'm going to press F to increase this. Maybe not that much. To the side of the. Uh, I find that it adds to the effect. Well, the mouse will zoom in. Let's take this strength up. Make them 700. So I'm going to press F. Here we go. Here. 
I have to the uh, smooth on. Turn that off. There we go. Hold shift, smooth that out some. I'm going to hold shift and a middle mouse button to pan. We can fairly quickly add wrinkles to this by clicking here, clicking on our mask tool. Make sure your strength is on 100. I'm going to zoom in. I find that uh, Z shapes tend to work fairly well. We know we need uh, stress wrinkles right here, so I'm going to just like that right there. Press F to increase the size of the brush. Now let's turn off our symmetry lock. I'm just drawing, you know, S or Z shapes. So now we'll hold control, press I. We'll click here, we'll go to the inflate brush, we'll press F. We'll inflate these wrinkles. Okay, then we'll hold Alt. While holding Alt, we'll press M. Okay, what we're going to do is make sure that we have our symmetry lock on. I'm going to press F to shrink my brush. What we can do is hold Control while holding Control, holding Shift, hold Shift. So I'm holding Control and Shift. Now I'm left clicking and I'm drawing mask to protect the seams. So let go of control and shift. I'm now holding control and shift again. Now some seams we do want to go over. But this will allow us to work quicker. So I'm letting go of control and shift when I uh, turn the mouse basically. Let me turn the, uh, the view. I'm just looking for the seams. I'm going to offer them some uh, protection. And the reason for that is it's 
turn this off now I'm gonna press F hold shift we're just gonna smooth F to make my brush bigger. General smoothing. I will hold Alt while holding Alt, press M. Holding Shift. Now that the uh, protection of your seams are off, be careful about going over your seams. If you take your time, oh, my seam. This is a way that you can, you know, you really can get some nice uh, effects for it. And if you don't have a lot of time, you can also get a, you know, some work in fairly quickly. And uh, what you can do is you can click, and if you're you know, bunched up, kind of, you can kind of go in. You can actually move the wrinkles, smooth them, kind of like pull them, and adjust them how you want them to be. Or if you're not pleased with the wrinkles, you can, you know, pretty much wipe them out. If this isn't going fast enough for you, you can use the uh, flatten brush and you'll see that this is like a kind of like a super, it's kind of like a super smooth brush. You can go back to a smooth brush, by the way, even when using uh, the flatten brush. So you can kind of you know, have a difference between like super smooth and smooth. Okay, I'm gonna click here, click here to go to object mode. Click here. I'm gonna press M. I'm gonna click here to move that hoodie to that layer. And then click on our pants. I'm gonna hold shift, then press D. I'm gonna right click. Then I'm gonna press M. I'm gonna move our duplicate pants to this layer. So now we'll uh, work on these pants to make a different kind of pants. Okay, so we have our pants duplicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to click here. 
And with these pants like this, we're going to click here. We're going to go to sculpt mode. And what I want to do is make baggy pants kind of tighter here, but baggy there. I don't tend to see that a lot. So let's make sure symmetry lock is on. Way out. I couldn't see how far they were out. Yeah, so right here. Click here to go to edit mode. I'm gonna run face select. I'm gonna hold Alt Level Shift. And click here. I'm gonna press Shift D. Then right click. Then hold Alt. Then press S. Extrude this up. I'm going to press P, choose separate, go to object mode. I'm making this kind of like a kind of like a metal belt. I click here, go to solidify, make this thicker, and click apply, click here, go to edit mode. I'm going to grab this and go to edge select first press a to deselect hold alt click here press b beveling this right here i'm going to take this up to three I'm going to press a to deselect i'm going to hold alt click here hold b control b still have that bevel which is good i'm going to hold control press two want this to be flat so what I'm going to do is press C select that bottom part there I use paint select to deselect the top part press C for there we go I'm going to press S to scale on the Z axis 0 press R to rotate That's fine. I kind of want like a metal kind of like shape, I'm kind of thinking like warrior type pants. We can uh, very quickly and easily go like this to mirror, move that above like that, back to our pants. So with these pants, we're gonna click here. We added a multi-resolution modifier. Then what we're going to do is go here to scope mode. And uh, basically what we want is to make it look like these pants are kind of droopy. Something in like Dragon Ball type ninja type deal. Marsh warts. Where you can fight. Not pants. Like I said before, we can kind of simulate our own gravity. So we can click here, just move this out. So we'll use this to kind of put, it's too much. Won't use that. We'll use this then. We'll go to our mask brush. Kind of in the back we want here 
This almost to be like a bunch of X's. Some of it before. We can kind of take our snake hook brush and kind of like drag these. And start smoothing smoothing them out. brush kind of like this control I And I'll M to get rid of the mask. And you hold shift. And you can take this snake, snake hook brush and you can kind of drag the wrinkles. It's pretty cool. Kind of reshape them. go to smooth and I'll increase the strength to our crease brush turn off smooth stroke like this click here go to materials see how it looks with muscle on them okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift I'm gonna click here I wanted to see what that hoodie looked like looks with the pants looks pretty cool I'm gonna click on this hoodie I'm gonna hold shift press D duplicate I'm gonna right click and now I'm gonna press M to, to bring up our move to layer panel then click here I'm then going to hold shift then click here so now we're only seeing this layer I let go of shift so with this hoodie selected on it's a lot of geometry now so it's starting to lag some I'm going to click here to take this off then what I'm going to do is click here go to edit mode I'm 
I'm going to go to edge select I'm going to hold alt click here I'm going to press V which uh, rips that rips this uh, edge right here I'm going to hold L here press X choose faces to delete then gonna come down to good old auto mirror click that I'm gonna hold alt I'm gonna go to edge select press A to D select pray that press A to select everything press okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift I'm gonna click here I'm gonna click on our hoodie I'm gonna hold shift then press D I'm gonna right click I just duplicated this hoodie I'm gonna press M then I'm gonna click here this is our move to layer so I'm gonna click there to move the duplicate hoodie here so now I'm gonna hold shift and then while holding shift I'm gonna click here so now we can just see this hoodie so I'm gonna click on there some legs it's a lot of geometry I'm gonna take off this multi-resolution modifier I'm gonna click here go to edit mode we don't have a mirror modifier on here so I'm gonna go to our auto mirror click this Just a D select A to select everything A to D select I did that just so I know nothing is selected I'm gonna click here to go to edge select I'm gonna hold alt I'm gonna click here I'm gonna press V V rips so I've ripped this edge away from that edge so now I'm gonna press A to D select I'm gonna click here to go to face select over here press L press X bring up our delete menu then choose faces to delete I'm gonna hold shift and the mouse button to pan edge select selected now it's selected I'm gonna hold alt hold shift I thought it would let me select that didn't I'm gonna press V turn off the mirror Hold control press R the loop cut in. I'm gonna hold alt press V over here press L when you hover over something and press L you can delete this one strange I'm gonna hold shift to select this X just hold on the mouse button to rotate the view I'm gonna click here to turn this back I'm going to click here go to object mode Click apply. Okay, the reason I wanted to do that, hold shift and the mouse button pan, was I wanted to click here, hold control, then click here, hold alt while holding alt press O. I just turned on a connected proportional editing tool. Proportional editing tool allows us to move more than one vertex edge or face at a time the connected proportional editing tool does the same thing but it focuses right here so when the area of influence goes over here this won't move if that makes sense I'm gonna press G to see the area of influence I'm gonna right click I'm gonna push this forward like that push this over and out like that Grab here. Push this forward. Push that forward. Don't want that. Press G. Roll the mouse wheel. Shrink that. Basically what I'm trying to do here is 
have this part of the clothing overlap and make it clear when you look at it that it's overlapping which actually can be more difficult than you might think I'm going to hold alt click here should have grabbed that whole loop then pull that back there we go I should make things better see that it was able to pull that back that far now I'm going to hold alt I mean press A to deselect hold alt click here oops press A Alt, press there, and click there. Ah, uh, it, it, Blender, well, whatever. Let me press G, there we go. Shrink the area of influence. Let me press Z, wireframe, I'll press C, deselect here. Wireframe allowed me to just see everything so I could easily deselect. Okay, now we want to press A to, press A to deselect. Hold Alt, click here. We press G. Pull this down like that. I'm gonna hold Alt. Press S to scale. Press A to deselect. Hold Alt. Remember what I'm doing here? Trying to make this belt visible so it's easy to work with. I'm using the shortest path here. I clicked here, I held control there. I go to face select. Just trying to pull this out. Okay, so what we're going to do now is click here, go to object mode. We're going to click here, go to solidify, it's only rim. We'll click apply. We'll then click here and then put a multi resolution modifier on, subdivide it up to four. Let's go to edit mode and press A to select everything. The color looks strange, so I'm going to hold control while holding control, press N to recalculate the normals. Maybe it's okay. Come here. Okay, so now we'll click here. Go to sculpt mode. And here in sculpt mode, we will... Let's press B for box select. Now we won't have to worry about doing something to that top part right there. We actually can do the same thing here, which is cool. Press, yeah, let's hold Control and Shift. Oh, that's nice. Oop, didn't want that. I'm gonna hold Alt M. Okay, so I mean, uh, we'll press B box. Over. So we're putting this box here so we can work with this right here. Now we're pulling this out like this. Okay, so let's click here, go to edit mode. Click here. I'm going to hold Alt while holding Alt. Press O. Didn't do anything. Hold. There we go. Connect to proportional editing. I'm going to press G. And there we go. Pull that to the side like this. Press G. Pull that to the side like that. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'll hover here. Press L. Hover here. Press L. And I'll press. X to bring up our delete menu, then choose faces to delete. I click there. I'm gonna press O, then O just to turn off that connected connected proportional editing tool. 
and click here object mode click here and go to scope mode here I'm gonna go inflate see what I want to do here is go to the snake oak brush getting close and I want to make it look like this material is a uh, bunch underneath that belt Okay, I'm gonna hold Alt press M. Hold Alt press M. Pull this down and out. See, by pulling down and sculpt, it's kind of cool because it's it kind of gets wrinkles. Uh, just by you pulling down, it's pretty decent. Currently, looks like we have on symmetry lock. I'm going to turn that off. It's kind of like almost I want this going over the belt so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click I'm gonna click here so F there we go there we go for this we can hold control zoom in close Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go to our mask brush, we'll press F to fill, not F to fill, <laughs> F to change the size, my brain, I'm trying to think, so uh, we'll find some things here. If you take your time, <laughs> hopefully you can see you can do some very cool stuff. I'm going to hold control, press I. Uh, my brain starts thinking it's like, oh. So now we're just basically puffing this up. So I'm going to go to four. So then we. Hold shift and minimize button pan, hold alt M. We come back and we smooth it out. Be careful of our seams. Excuse me. Let's 
plate brush when I see areas like that. So I'm holding down shift to smooth. Now I'm just letting regular, regular, uh, regular inflate here kind of billow that out and then when we see the wrinkles we can press F go in and uh, hold control deflate in between the uh, wrinkles Remember, you can go to your flatten brush for things that are, if you want it faster. You can go back and forth between shift and flatten. And then you can click and uh, just press F to make this bigger. Adjust your clothes how they are setting to make them look not symmetrical. Remember, you can grab your wrinkles and kind of you can actually manually adjust your wrinkles and. Shift, like push them to the side, and kind of add like a flow to them. Areas like this, you can come in. Careful your seams. And just smooth that out. I'm sorry for my silence. My brain is like sitting there like, oh, eh, Blender's fun. It's so fun that sometimes I forget I'm in the middle of a tutorial. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay, so we have this clothing here. I'm going to click here, go to object mode. I'm going to click here and go to material mode. How do we use this other than just looking at it? Well, if we click on our shirt, we then hold shift, press D, right click. Then we press M to bring up our move to layer. We move this shirt down a layer. We then click on our pants. Our pants are selected on because we can see this orange outline. We hold shift, we press D. I right click to get them to stay in place. Now I press M to move them down a layer. Okay, now we're going to click on that layer. We're gonna click here and go to solid view. So let's click on the shirt first. And what we're going to do is we have this multi-res modifier. We don't want to take this off, but what we do want to do is use its ability to go down. 
So now this is way less geometry than it originally was. This is just one. We're going to click apply. We'll deal with that. Same thing for the pants. We're going to take this down. Then we're going to click apply. As far as that up there, let's click here. Go to edit mode. Zoom in. Click here. Press X. Okay, let's press Z. Okay, let's go to vertex select them. Press X. There we go. Go back to solid view. Now we're going to hover here over this little stripe thing. Pull this to the side. We're going to click here. We're going to take this. Go to UV slash image editor. We're going to press A and A again. What I'm about to show you is not the optimal way to unwrap. We need to unwrap this so we can put a normal map on it. That's what's going to make this usable. This is uh, for the sake of speed. So we're going to press U. We bring up our UV mapping uh, menu. We're then going to select Smart UV Project. Click OK. So now we have that right here. The unwrap of this. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to click New. For a new image, we're going to name this Shirt Normal. Press Enter. We're going to change this from 1024 to 2048. 2048. Press Enter. We're going to click OK. Color really isn't important. We're then going to look here. See if it has this little asterisk symbol, it being this name message. We're going to click here. We're going to click Save as Image. We're going to find a place where we know how to get back to our saved image. I'm making a folder named Textures. Now I click Save as Image. So now that little asterisk symbol went away. The little asterisk symbol was letting us know that this image wasn't saved. And if we closed Blender and then opened it back up, possibly this image wouldn't have been there. So now that we did that, that little asterisk uh, Symbol is gone in Blender. You have to save your Blender file as well as the image when you're doing things like what we're doing now, which is making a normal map. Okay, so with that done, what we're going to do is we're going to gonna press A to deselect. I'm going to click here, go to object mode, right? I'm going to hold shift, then I'm going to click. Before I do that, put it down, make sure I know which object we're on. So this is shirt 1.005. I'm going to double click here, name this low poly shirt. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to click here. I'm going to hide our low poly shirt. I'm going to click here. Okay, so I'm going to, this is named shirt 1.004. I'm going to double click here, name this high poly shirt. What we need to do is we need to click here, scroll down. And we see this uh, bake mode. So we already have this set for normals. If this wasn't set for normals, you would click here, look through the list, and then you would click uh, normals. You would also make sure that you have a check mark next to selected to active. Okay, so with our low poly shirt having a UV map on it, that's what that smart UV projected. And with having this set for normals as well as selected to active, now what we need to do is click to bring our low poly shirt back. I'm gonna press A to deselect. First, we need to select our high poly shirt. And then second, we need to select our low poly shirt. See how the shirts are right over top of each other? That's good, that's what we want. Okay, so uh, what we can do is we can click here, right in here. So I'll click high poly shirt first. And it's selected. Now I'm going to hold shift. And then while holding shift, click low poly shirt. So now I'm letting go of shift. They're both selected in that order. The order is very important. And with that done, now I can click bake. When I click that, you see this 
meter right here going and now we have a normal map right here so with this new normal map uh, produced, and what a normal map does is it allows you to make a mesh look like it has more geometry than it does. So we have this here. We want to click this image. See that little asterisk symbol? We want to click image, save as image. And I'm going to just put, you know what? Uh, yeah, this is the actual image. So let's click here, then click Save as Image. So we save right over the other image. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do that same process again. We're going to click here. We're going to click on these pants, right? We're going to go to this window, get rid of this. With these pants, we're going to go to Edit. We're going to press A to select these pants. We're going to click this X again. We're going to press U to bring up uh, our UV mapping menu. We're going to then select Smart UV Project, then click OK. We're then going to click New. We're going to name this Pants Normal. Press. We already set for uh, 2048 and 2048. I'm going to press enter. I'm then going to click OK. So with that done, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to click here, then click here to go back to object mode. Okay, so these are our pants. Let's double click here and name these low poly pants and then press enter. So now we're going to click here. Let's click these pants. Let's double click here and name these high poly pants then press enter so now with that set up what we can do is we can hold shift click here we already have our normals set up so this is selected for, for this says normals this is has a check mark next to selected to active so we're going to press a the order is important that we select we need to first select the high poly and then go to the low poly. So we're going to left click on the high poly, hold shift, and then while holding shift, left click on the low poly. I'm letting go of shift, and now we click bake. You can see the progress right there. Here's our bake here. So now we see that the image with the asterisk symbol. Now let's click here, click save as image. Click Pants Normal, so we'll click Save. Now we'll press A to deselect. Okay, now what we can do is see our high poly shirt? We can click this. We can press M to bring up our Move to Layer. And we can move this away. We can then click on our high poly pants, press M, and then move these away. Okay, and we don't need this anymore. Well, we need it, but not set up where we can see it like this. So we'll hover here, left click, drag that to the side. So now when we click on this shirt here, what we need to do is go to materials, click new. We then go to this texture uh, tab here. We click new here. We want image or movie. We scroll down. We're gonna click open. And we're gonna go to where we saved those normals at. So I'm going to click shirt normal, click open. So now we see the normal selected here. We scroll down. This is very important. See where it says image sampling. You want to check this. Uh, and when I say check this, put a check mark next to normal map. You want to scroll down. We're not interested in the, this is the influence. We're not interested in having a color for this. So we're going to click this. So now we're going to put a check mark next to normal under geometry. So we can click there. We're going to do the same thing for the pants. We're going to click on the pants. Let's scroll up. Let's click here. Now let's click here. 
we'll click new we have image or movie we click open we go to where our pants normal is at we click there we click open we scroll down this is very important underneath image sampling you want to put a check mark next to normal map scroll down we're not interested in the color for this. We unclick color and then we put a check mark here next to normal. With that done, we click here and we go to material. And these are the low poly. Now there's some issues here, but these are the low poly uh, clothes, yet they look very similar to our high poly clothes. And this method can be done for all of the clothes that we just made. And then, of course, you can clean up issues as well. Uh, but now that these are much lower, these clothes are usable and uh, can be rigged and used in multiple places. Okay, guys, that's it for the tutorial. For all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel, we share them. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And for those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel, you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.